Welcome, my name is Kayla and I am an artist as well as a previous paint and sip studio owner. Today we are going to be painting this snowy pink sunset or sunrise together. So this works best if you start playing the video and paint along with me. Let's get started. Now it's up to you if you want your painting to be vertical or horizontal. I'm going to do mine vertical today, so I'm going to have a taller sky. I'm going to start by giving myself a line where I want my horizon to begin. Now this depends on if you want more of your painting to be sky versus trees. And I'm not giving myself a straight line. I'm giving myself a little hill here, and then I'm going to give myself couple more hills below this one, giving us some nice depth to our ground here, our foreground. Now using one of my smaller flat brushes, I'm going to get some white paint. And although our canvas is white, I am still going to pick the spot where I want my sun to be. It could be in the center or skewed to the side, and I'm going to give myself a white circle where my sun will be. And I'm going to be pretty liberal with the paint. I'm putting quite a bit on there. We're going to need this paint to be nice and wet when we start blending the next step. Now our sky is going to fade from this white to sort of a golden yellow into a pink, a very salmon-y pink. And so I'm not going to start with plain yellow. I'm actually going to mix myself the tiniest, tiniest bit of pink with some yellow. I'm going to give myself this really golden hue of yellow. And using this, I'm going to start painting using now my one inch brush, a circle right around the outside of my white circle. Now, since both colors are wet, you should be able to run your brush over where they both touch and gently blend them together. This, this little center is pretty small, so I move down to a smaller brush and I am just blending together where my white touches my yellow giving it that nice fading effect. Now I want my sky to keep getting progressively more pink. So I'm going to take a little bit more pink, bring it over to my yellow. And I'm getting a little bit more of an orange hue now to my yellow paint. And I'm going to repeat the step that I just did. I'm going to start painting a circle right around the outside of my last circle and then blending the two together in a circular motion. All of the blending in this painting is going to follow this circular shape. It's all coming out from the sun. Now the key to blending is that all of your paint that you're working with is still very wet. So if you take a little bit too long and your first color dries, you will not be able to achieve this blending effect. Acrylic paint does dry fairly quickly, so that's why it is important when you're planning on blending to be liberal with the amount of paint that you're putting on your canvas so that it doesn't dry out too quickly. Now I'm going to add a little bit more pink. I'm giving myself a nice salmon-y color here. And then repeating that last step. Blending this color into the last 
gives us this nice transition effect. I'm going to continue to add more pink. Depending on how light or dark you want your pink sky to be, you could add a little bit of white to lighten this color up. I want my pink to just be a little softer, so I'm adding a little bit of white. Continuing blend into the last color. circular motion. Now around the outskirts of my sky, I, I actually want there to be a little bit of darkness where you can see that the sun is beginning to set and night is falling. And so I'm going to give the outer edges of my sky a little bit of purple. So you can see I only have about an inch around the outside. And while my pink is still wet, I'm going to mix myself a light purple, perhaps even a, a light mixture of my pink and my purple. And with this light purple, I'm filling in this last part of my sky. blending is having a brush with bristles that are stiff enough to really move this paint around. If you're painting with a very floppy, soft brush, it will be difficult to blend this paint smoothly. It doesn't mean you can't do it. It will just take a little bit more effort. And there I am happy with my sky. Now I'm going to switch over to my blue paint and I'm going to mix myself a very, very light shade of blue. So I'm going to mix white and blue together. Because even though snow is white, it often has a hint of blue in it when you look closely. Now the sun is going to be hitting the top of each hill and so it is natural that at the bottom we want to be a little bit darker. We want to shade the bottom of each hill so that it contrasts against the highlighted top of the next hill. And so I'm filling in along the bottom of this first hill in the distance with my light blue. And I'm being liberal with the amount of paint and then getting a little bit of white on my brush, I'm going to make it slowly fade from blue to white as I get towards the top of this little hill here. Painting right over the top of part of my sky here. Foreground will always be in front of the background, which is why we work from back to front. So that you can see there is a level of depth and dimension to just this one little hill of snow. 
I'm going to repeat the same step on this second little hole. Giving the bottom a shadow. And slowly introducing more white paint as I go up to the top. And blending it as I go. Repeating the same step at the very bottom, giving myself a light blue. Now acrylic paint does dry very quickly, so our background is nearly dry. So I'm going to start adding in some of the small trees that are very far away in the distance. So using either a small angled brush or a detail brush, I am going to mix myself the color of my trees. Now our trees in the front are going to be very sharp in contrast because they're closer, but our trees that are farthest away are a little bit blurry in the distance. They're a little bit foggy. It's a snowy night. And so I'm actually going to make myself a gray. I'm going to mix some black and white together. To give myself, I would say a medium shade of gray. Now because this painting has a whimsical, fun, colorful vibe, I'm actually going to add a tiny bit of purple into my gray. So it has just the tiniest hint of saturation. With this very dull purple gray paint, I'm going to give myself some very, very small pointy trees in the distance. Now these trees, I like to paint by starting with a vertical line and then from the center I'm coming out and swooping downwards, lifting my brush as I go, giving myself this little Christmas tree. Now I'm going to do quite a few of these trees back here. And remember that trees in nature are not evenly spaced. They're not symmetrical. There are no perfections in nature. Everything is imperfect. And so the more perfect you try to make your trees or your painting, the less real it will look. have one coming down a little bit over my snow, meaning it's planted just a little closer. Now remember, things that are far away are much smaller than things that are close. I'm 
try my angled brush. There we go. It's up to you how many or how few trees you want in your painting. I think I'm happy with this amount of trees and so I'm going to take the same brush and dipping it in white paint I'm actually going to mix myself a little bit of a very very light gray that is nearly white but not pure white and I'm going to start adding little accents of snow on these trees. Now these trees are very, very far away, so you don't need to worry about details too much. I'm just giving myself a few little lines. Coming off of my branches. Little clumps of snow. barely visible in the distance. Little snow spots throughout my tree. Now I'm going to add a few trees that are a little bit closer than these trees, but not all the way in the foreground. And so I'm going to make this color just a little bit darker, a little bit darker of a gray. Again, I'm adding a little purple. I'm using this ever so slightly darker gray. I'm going to do a few trees that are a little bigger and a little bit lower than these ones. They are closer, so they're going to appear larger, but it will just add to the perspective of the painting. They're also a little bit darker because they're more visible. Again, 
and I'm just coming down off the center stem with my little swoopy lines that are coming down and out. This painting is a little bit whimsical. It's not supposed to look like realism, so I'm not being too particular about the shape of these trees. I'm going to do one here and perhaps one on this side. It's a little bit too dark. This one is going to stop at this hill because really it comes down behind the hill a lot further. Now I'm going to give these trees some snow as well. So I am using, again, this just off-white. It's very, very, very light gray. Repeating what I did before, giving myself some little snow patches coming out at the same angle as my branches. Not covering my tree, just highlighting where the snow is sitting in clumps on different branches and I'm really not really being particular about where the snow sits. Just giving myself little clumps. There we go. Now for my trees that are in the foreground that are very close, I am going to paint them in black. Really these are silhouettes, they're shadows, just adds to the depth of the painting. These are the trees that are being touched the least by the light as the sun is setting. And so I'm going to do a, a few here on this middle hill and probably a big one over here on this very front hill. So I'm gonna do a few, let's see, a few over here. They're going to be even bigger than the last because they're closer. I'm going to use my detail brush. branches are coming down and out. adding a little bit more texture to these trees by just doing a lot of dabbing motions, giving them little leaves. I'm going to have this tree stop right here. This is where it is planted, right here on this middle hill. I'm going to add another next to it. This one might be a little shorter, and again, I'm painting right over the top of everything in the background. Branches are a little thinner up here at the top.
and I fill in my tree. Now, there are no trunks visible oops, below our branches here because the snow is pretty deep. So we're only seeing the branches, no, no trunk coming down because theoretically it would be surrounded by snow. It's up to you how many trees you want in each area. I'm going to add another tree now, a very close tree, just one more large tree right up here on our closest hill. So this tree is going to be very large, the largest of all of them. Filling in my thinner branches at the top to almost come out directly vertical at the very top. And as it gets a little further down, they start to slope downward as if as the branches get longer, the weight of them starts to pull them down. Pulling in this tree here. So they get so long that the weight of them really pulls them at a downward angle. Now I am leaving a few little glimpses of the background visible in between my branches here. There are usually thin spots between leaves and branches on the tree. Don't be afraid to leave some little spots for the background to peek through your branches. Now we want these trees to also have a light dusting of snow. I'm going to give this black paint a moment to dry before I do that. All right, now still using a very, very off-white, not quite pure white, gray. And I'm still adding just the slightest hint of purple in there. You might want to add a little pink if you want it to have a pink tint. I'm going to start adding the same little clumps of snow that I did on the trees in my background. Now they follow the general shape of your branches. As these trees get a little bigger, you can get a little bit more particular about your snow spots. Essentially, they're sitting on top of branches, so they should follow the direction of your branches. Remember, these are big clumps of snow. The snow tends to accumulate in one big clump. There we go. I'm going to add these same snow spots. There we go. And repeating this same step on my very closest tree. Just giving myself 
a nice layer of snow that has accumulated on each little clump of branches. Now that I have given myself this slight dusting of snow, I am actually going to start adding just some pure white to my brush. And not on every snow spot, but on a few, I'm going to give my snow a little highlight of pure white. Just a little glimmer at the top of each, not each, but most little clumps. This gives our snow some depth. The snow isn't flat, it has bumps, it has spots that the light is touching more than others. Just giving my snow some highlight. And I'm really only worried about these three trees that are black. The snow on the other trees is too far away to be worried about any kind of highlight or depth. Now we're almost done. I want to add a layer of fresh falling snow from the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my paintbrush and I'm going to mix myself a very thin watered down white. The thinner that this white is, the smaller your snowflakes will be and the thicker the paint is, the larger your snowflakes will be. I'm going to really saturate these bristles of the toothbrush with the white paint and then folding the bristles towards the canvas about a foot away. Don't go too close. I'm going to pull the bristles back with my finger and let go. I'm going to just nicely mist my entire canvas in these little white specks of snow. I always say to start with less, you can always add more, but you can't take it away once you've started. You can get closer if you want once you've started, but start out far away until you get the hang of it. Now you can see that in some spots I get these bigger specks that I didn't necessarily plan on, but what I like to do is take my detailed brush in my white paint and I just fill it in until it's kind of a circle and I just make these larger snowflakes and I add a few of them throughout with my brush. These snowflakes are falling closer and the smaller ones must be falling farther away. Again we are adding depth to our painting. Now the snow is falling in front of the trees, so it's okay to paint over the top of your trees. And it is important to remember that just like anything in nature, snow does not fall perfectly parallel or evenly spaced out. You don't want to have one snowflake every inch. That looks unnatural. I might do two here, one here, few falling close together right here. 
Now well, it is up to you if you want to add any other fun little features to your painting. You could add a snowman or some birds, but for me, I'm going to finish right here. And here we have our finished winter sunset. Leave me any suggestions or feedback in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe if you like this video. Have a great day, guys. Thank you.